Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, my name is Eric and I'm an electronic music producer and performer from Denver, Colorado. And I'm so glad to have you here. If it's your first time coming to the channel, thank you very much and hope you get something valuable out of this. And uh, if you've been here before, welcome back. Glad to see you again. Basically what we're gonna go over today is uh, the audio routing through my live setup and through the electron boxes that are in my live setup. I did a previous video about the MIDI routing and I'll actually link that up here up above. So if you're interested in that and you wanna see how we linked the MIDI chain, so what's controlling what, uh, you can go ahead and check that video out. This one is gonna be all about the audio routing. Uh, another thing that's really unique about the Electron devices and one of the things that really kind of lean, got me to lean towards them as far as being the, the devices that I use for my live setup is um, the, the flexibility with the audio routing and the ability to be able to group things together into buses or groups of channels and groups of, of signals so that you can process them differently and also to be able to, to link them all together so that you don't need a, an additional mixer that you're running everything through different channels and then you've got another piece of equipment to bring with you and other stuff to connect and, and set up and this way it can all kind of run one through the other. So what we're gonna be talking about today is what's unique about each one of these devices and how we use that uniqueness for each one of the channels. There's a real method to the madness of how they're connected together uh, in order to be able to use certain effects and certain uh, audio routing possibilities from each one of the machines in order to get the most out of those. And then getting them all to go through the Octatrack as the final summing mixer and then master out to you know, wherever you're playing, whether it's going into a DAW like Ableton Live in order to be able to record, or if you're playing out live and you need to go into the house system or into a mixer or something like that, that'll go out to a house system, you can do that, but it gives you one set of stereo master outs at the end of this whole chain uh, without having to use a mixer. And total, I think we've got about 35 channels maybe of sequencing capability, um, 35 individual sequenceable sounds, samples, things like that through this whole chain. And it all goes through one final stereo output pair with different types of effects and things like that. So that's what we're gonna go over today. Electron audio routing. All right, so just to start off really quick with how everything is uh, connected and run through this, we have two separate sides of this, one being the drum percussion side, the other being the melodic side, and then they all kind of meld together into the Octatrack in the center. Um, we have a couple of different control pieces here. Uh, the Novation Launch Control controls the Dig Attack, and then we have the PC-12, which is controlling some functions of the Octatrack, some of the Digitone, and some of the Analog 4, so that we don't have to menu dive too deeply when we're, um, we're playing around and we don't have to keep digging through things. We can have everything kind of available and, and uh, right here in front of us. So we've got all of the percussion and then all of the, the main drum sounds, so kicks, snares, you know, hi-hats, a lot of the the um, kind of effects hits and things like that are all being done through the analog rhythm. And then a lot of the general percussion stuff is coming from the, from the dig attack. So that signal goes into the external in, which routes it through. And then the main out from the analog rhythm goes into the C and D channel on the Octatrack. So stereo and stereo out from there going into the Octatrack. So all those stereo effects that are coming from the analog rhythm and the stereo effects that are coming from the dig attack are all running in stereo into the Octatrack. Over on this side, we have a really similar routing, but for different reasons. So the uh, left and right outputs from the Digitone are coming out into the external in of the analog four. And then that external in from the analog four is going out to the A and B uh, stereo input in the Octatrack. So again, this signal from the Digitone can be manipulated in the Digitone as well as in the analog four, as well as in the Octatrack. So we get a lot of flexibility of layers of processing of things that we need, just like the the, uh, the drum bus on uh, on the other side. The, the reason why we have these linked this way is that the analog four um, 
and the Digitone don't have compressors. Um, obviously, compressors are needed a bit less in general in, in electronic music, particularly in the techno music that I do. They're needed a lot less on the melodics than they are on the drum hits because those tend to be the things with pretty dynamic transients and things that we want to really make sure that we have great control over. So we use a compressor at, at leaving the Digitect. Um, so there's a master compressor leaving that. Then we have a master compressor leaving the analog rhythm, that combined signal of the two. And then that's going through a master compressor at the end in the, uh, in the Octatrack. Um, so just to give a little example of that. So if, we're, if we have a, a percussion sound going on the Digitact, so you notice we have a few different controls. So here in the Digitact, just using that at the beginning, this has, if you hit function and the LFO button, that gets you to this master compressor. So you can see you've got your threshold and your attack and your release and then your um, your makeup gain. So all of that is the, the master signal of all eight tracks of the Digitact um, as they're leaving this, uh, this instrument. So you have a master compressor to kind of tame that signal and make sure you've got it under control. You've also got a bunch of different volume level controls, whether it's by sample um, or channel, uh, however you want to look at that. So you can control the individual gain of the, the sample, then you can control your, um, your track volume, and then you've also got a master volume here, which is you know master volume for everything coming out, and then it's going through a master compressor, which also has this, the makeup gain on it as well. Okay, so next step in the process, um, that signal goes into the external in of the analog rhythm, which is right up here, the yellow cable that's going in there, into the external in. And then in that whole chain of effects that are over here, the that external in signal, if you look in the manual, it shows that that signal joins in at the point just before the compressor. So if we go to effects and then hit um, the amp, which is also the compressor, this gives us our control over our master output compressor for the analog rhythm. So you'll see, you know, threshold attack release, just like we had on the dig attack coming out. Now it's taking that dig attack signal, putting it together with the analog rhythm signal um, and all of the different things that are in the inside the analog rhythm and sounds that are coming out of there. And then those are all coming through this master compressor coming out the other side. So you'll hear if we have that same just that same sound coming from the dig attack. And then it goes through here. Let's just, you know, check the, see what the makeup gain, that's affecting that as well. But if you go to something like reverb and you add reverb to it, it doesn't affect it because it comes into the chain just before the compressor and just before it goes out. So you have a compressor leaving the dig attack, you have a compressor after it's been added to the sounds of the analog rhythm. And then you can do your own gain staging to mix those two so that the sounds coming out of the, the uh, dig attack are properly leveled with the sounds that are coming out of the, um, the analog rhythm. Something else that this allows for as well is that the analog rhythm has a master volume um, which basically asks, uh, acts as a master bus volume for the drum bus as it comes out of the analog rhythm and goes then into Octatrack. So next we have the Digitone. Um, so melodic stuff coming out of the Digitone, out of the master left and right, going into the external end of the analog four. This allows the Digitone, for example, to have sounds that are coming out of that that we can affect. We've got you know a master volume coming out of this, also channel levels, and then we've got all of the different effects within the Digitone um, by channel. So we can affect each one of those things initially before the signal comes out and goes into the analog four. So as you can see, we have the signal coming out of the Digitone and then going into the external end of the analog four. Um, what's interesting about that is with the analog rhythm, it merges into the signal chain. So the, that signal from the Digitone goes into the signal chain just before the compressor in the analog rhythm. So this has its own signal chain. So within the, the analog four, um, with all of the different things over here, if you hit effects and then you go to, let's say, delay or chorus or things like that, any of these effects are only going to affect the sound that's coming uh, from within the analog four. 
But if you hit this oscillator one button, which is, if you look down below, it says external in as well. So when you hit that, what that gives you is its own little mixer panel for that external signal that's coming in from the from the digitone or from whatever you've got plugged into that external end. So it allows you to have volume control by side. So it's a stereo signal. So you've got a left and right volume control. You've got left and right pan control. So you could actually you know center this out and have it be one signal that's coming down the middle. But this also allows you to control the stereo width if you choose. You've got uh, reverb sends left and right from that for that input signal you've got delay sends left and right and then you've got a chorus send left and right so every single one of the effects that you've got to manipulate the analog force signal independently you also have on its own channel to be able to send that uh that external in signal uh through so it gives you a way to, you can affect a signal within the Digitone or within whatever synth you're using. Then once it comes into the Analog 4, you've got its own channel to control it and affect it again, independently from the channel, the channels where you're controlling the four channels from within the, uh, the Analog 4. And then that signal goes to the main out from the Analog 4, and the main out goes into the AB in on the Octatrack. Okay, so the orange signal here, the orange cables are the ones that are coming in from the analog rhythm. So that's our drum bus, if you will, that channel. Stereo ins uh, into the C and D. Then we have our, you know, kind of melodic synth bus, if you want to call it that, coming in on these brown cables going into channels A and B. So two stereo pairs going in from the two separate buses that we've set up on the different sides. And then we have our master out. Um, in this case, it's going out to uh, Ableton Live so I can record some stuff, but it could be going to a house mixer if you're performing a show somewhere, or it can go to your powered speakers, or it could go to your amp or however you've got your system set up, but it's your traditional um, left and right stereo master out. Now, once you get to the Octatrack, you have a couple of different options. The way I have the Octatrack set up is that channel eight is set up as uh, the master channel. And what I did is I put on that master channel a compressor and a reverb, just because I like to have that effects wise. So what happens is these two signals come in and no matter how we route them, everything that's in the Octatrack is gonna go through that, uh, that master channel, uh, channel track number eight. So it will go through that master compressor and go through that reverb if we choose to use the reverb on the signal. Now, there's a couple different ways to use these input signals. You can use through machines, where if you go to one of these channels and you set up the source um, as a through machine, then you can route um, one of these sides through its own track, then set up a neighbor with it if you want, so that you can have two or four additional effects if you wanna be able to do that. Um, I don't have it set up that way because I like using the effects that are within the, the machines already. So what I have set up here is these are set up. If you go into your mix channel, if you'll notice, we have the A, B and C, D are two separate sides of your general mix channel. And if you set the direct, the center piece right there, DIR, if direct is set to 127, what that does is that allows your A, B and C, D channels to pass through the Octatrack without needing to take up any uh, track. And it goes right through to the master channel. So it is still affected by the master compressor and the, any effects that you have on that master channel, but it doesn't take up an additional channel in your Octatrack um, if you don't need it. If you do need it, if you do need those, those uh, effects added in there, you just set it up as a through channel and route one of those through that channel and it will still go through your master and things like that. I have this set up uh, now so that I'm not using any of those channels and that leaves me seven channels of the Octatrack to use for sampling and sequencing and all of that stuff, um, loopers and anything that I wanna have them set up as and I don't need to take up channels with my external gear. I just have it passing right through because this external gear has great sequencers and great effects on its own. So I don't need the sequencers and the effects from the Octatrack. So I'm just gonna pass them through as a summing mixer rather than uh, taking up a channel there. Okay, so just really quick, just to show you how this is, uh, how the signal goes again one more time. So it's coming out of the dig attack. So we've got our master signal here. Um, still use the internal effects. So I've got, you know, reverb send here, got delay send 
here to the mod control. Got a pitch control. So the things that I've decided to set up here, but those are all using the internal effects of the dig attack. Then it goes through a master compressor, which I kind of set and forget as the, the kind of master um, uh, kind of clip limiter and things coming out of that. Then it's going into the external in here where I can then add in if I wanted to add in a kick. That's adding into that signal. And I have control over master volume from here, but also, also a kind of a bus volume control over on this side. And that allows me to add things in here. And then that goes through this master compressor in the analog rhythm. So you can hear that that's the makeup gain on that. Put back the threshold way back. So you can see that that affects the whole signal coming out of there. And then that goes into the octave track. And then in the final stage here, we've got the CD channel, which is my volume. That's my input of this whole channel going into C and D. Um, I can adjust gain on that as well. So if it's a weak signal, for example, I can adjust the gain there. And then just going into the master effects on the master channel here. I've got my compressor here and you can hear like makeup gain. And this has a mix as well. So you can do parallel compression on it as well. And so you can have this kind of master, um, you can have a master compressor on your whole mix in order to kind of glue everything together, a master glue compressor. Then from over on this side, if we were to add in, volume control for this, also individual level controls by channel. Then we've got all the different effects by channel before that ever leaves and goes out. Then it goes into the analog rhythm where I've got left and right volume controls over that, pan control, and then I've got reverb sends and delay sends. So I can affect those signals coming in independently of the signals coming out of here. And then if I wanted to add in a, uh, a signal coming out of the, um, the analog rhythm, or sorry, analog four, I would add that in then to that. And those two go together into the AB. And then once they get into the AB, it's very much the same as it was from the, um, the drum side. It goes into the AB. We've got it on a mix side where we've got a mix volume for it. Um, controlling the direct volume that's going into the master channel. And then it all goes through a master compressor at the end. So using that master compressor, we can then have some effect over everything. So you can hit the threshold super hard or back down here. We've got a mix control as well, makeup gain. And then you've got your, um, your ratio, your attack and your release for your compressor. So as you can see, there's a ton of flexibility with how you root things. Now I have the, um, the dig attack and dig tone going through this chain, but that initial instrument, um, doesn't need to be one of the electron boxes. So let's say you wanted to use, um, you know, you've got a, a, a Moog Minotaur and you really like that for bass sounds and you want to use that. You could actually use that, um, running that into the analog four and then through and have that same kind of control over effects and things like that. And you could control the sequencing from the, from the Octatrack. So there's a lot of different flexibilities with ways to do this um, in different things. If you wanted to have a different drum machine, like let's say you've got a TR8 and you really love it and you want to use that for certain things, you could put that in place of the dig attack and have your, um, your percussion sounds coming from there or your drum sounds coming from there and still use the great effects processing through the analog rhythm and then through the Octatrack to kind of sum everything together um, to keep you from having to have a mixer and things like that in your system. So tons of flexibility to be able to do this, to be able to um, combine things if you like, to keep them separate if you like, to affect them in different ways. And it allows you a ton of flexibility with your signal. So. This is the way I have it set up. It is by no means the way to do it. You, know, you can do it any way you like. And that's one of the beautiful things about uh, doing setups like this. And one of the things I really love about the, the, um, the electron machines in general is that they do so much and they're so flexible that you can set them up any way you like. I mean, there's people that are using the Octatrack as purely samplers and, you know, 
time stretching samples and chopping them up and doing things like that and, and using them to loop and resample and things like that. I don't use that as part of my thing. I prefer to use it as effects. I do use the loopers a bit, um, but to be able to get it to all kind of run together through that. Also, because each one of these has a really phenomenal sequencer, they aren't sequencing each other, although you can set that up if you'd like. As I mentioned, if you put in uh, another piece of gear, if you swapped in another piece for one of the pieces that's here and it didn't have an internal sequencer, an onboard sequencer, and you wanted to use one of the sequencers from one of the others, you can route that using the MIDI routing as well. So check out the, the video about MIDI routing. That'll kind of help explain a little bit what's controlling what from a telling it what to do uh, standpoint. And then this audio routing hopefully gave you an idea of what is doing what or what path it's following from an audio perspective. So basically we have eight channels of sample sequencing coming out of the DigiTac. We've got another 12 channels of sequencing synth and uh, sampling coming out of the analog rhythm. Um, then we've got four channels in the Digitone, another four channels in the Analog 4, and then we've got seven remaining channels because we're using the eighth channel as a um, as a master channel. So another seven channels there. So we've got 30 plus channels of flexibility to be able to mix and match and use to improvise and combine in different ways to create a real truly improvisational live set. So I hope you got something out of this video. Um, please give us a like and subscribe if you if you haven't already and, and hit the bell and it'll let you know exactly when we're going to be putting out another video and, and you get those first off and check out some of the other videos on the channel. And if you think you know somebody who might uh, benefit from what we're doing here, because I think we all tend to talk to other people in this in this same realm. If you know somebody else who might benefit, please uh, share the video with other people and and uh, spread the love around a little bit so that we can uh, get some more people out there being creative and uh, and using these machines machines in really creative different ways. Uh, thanks very much. I really appreciate you stopping by the video and I uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. See you later. Peace.